uh, functional approaches of uh, flow cytometry, and in particular, um, I will focus our, my attention on functional analysis of dendritic cells in the context of uh, lung cancer. So, first of all, uh, conventional dendritic cells. Uh, who are conventional dendritic cells? They are professional anti antigen presenting cells. They uh, act as sentinels in the peripheral tissues and they are able to integrate multiple uh, environmental signals and convey them to uh, CD4 and CD8 T lymphocytes. As you can see by the cartoon here, this is a conventional dendritic cell in the tissue. Um, she is, it is uh, um, work very hard, uh, fishing antigens in the space. Uh, in the meantime, the lazy T cells is just moving around, <laughs> looking for, um, for it to, to be activated. So, uh, because of that uh, um, function of the dendritic cells, so the ability to acquire antigens and to activate cytotoxic T lymphocytes, they hold a great therapeutic potential in cancer. So why we are, uh, that's why we are so interested in uh, uh, understanding conventional dendritic cells. In the tissues, we can find two different subsets of dendritic cells called DC1 and DC2. They both come from uh, a precursor in the bone marrow called the PREDC and they um, differentiate toward two different uh, lineages uh, mediated by different transcription factors, uh, BAF3 and IF8 for CDC1 and IF4 for CDC2. <coughs> Uh, they also are distinguished by um, expression of different markers on their uh, cell surface. For example, CDC1 are uh, identified by the uh, expression of CD103 and XA1, and on the contrast, uh, CDC2 express uh, the uh, common myeloid lineage uh, marker, uh, CD11B. And they are not only different in the markers, but also in the functions. Uh, CDC2 are able to uh, activate efficiently CD4 T cells, and on the contrary, CDC1 are the best cross-presenting cells. That means that they are able, uh, are the best one to uh, activate cytotoxic T cells. And uh, in the last years, many papers, and I show you some of the most important ones, uh, came out in the literature describing the important, the important role of uh, the important the importance of this, the presence of CDC1 in the inside the tumor, because their presence correlates with a good prognosis and also correlates with uh, an efficient and successful immunotherapy. So, okay. Uh, so uh, these data are present in the literature, but still, it's not really clear uh, which are the functions of the dendritic cells that are, that are altered affected by the tumor microenvironment. So how do they work in the tumor microenvironment? And this is the main pro um, focus of, of the project that Federica and I started uh, like five years ago. So first of all, in order to understand the functional alteration of CDC1 in lung cancers, we have to be able to identify correctly these cells in the tissues. So. Uh, the identification of these cells in the tissues is not so easy, it's quite tricky. Uh, why? Because in different tissues, um, CDC1 and CDC2 are present in different tissues, in peripheral tissues, and in each tissue, uh, they have been described by different surface markers. And uh, moreover, moreover, and more importantly, the tricky part is that uh, they co-express uh, different uh, uh, markers with their cousins that are the macrophages. And so many of the uh, DC populations can be actually uh, contaminated by macrophages. And here I reported a paper from Genou in 2016 where uh, they describe a gating strategy that could be able to uh, identify uh, CDC1, CDC2, and, uh, and uh, macrophages in uh, different tissues and also cross species. But I show you that because I would like to uh, focus your attention on the fact that uh, most of the uh, macrophages and dendritic cells share common markers. For example, here there are the macrophages in orange, and you can see that they also co express uh, CD11C, which is a prototypical marker of uh, dendritic cells. They express also MHC class 2, that is again a prototypical marker for dendritic cells, and also CD1, 72A, and CD11B. 
So it's quite tricky to have uh, uh, decide, identify the current st uh, getting strategy to identify these cells. Otherwise, you will have contamination with macrophages, and uh, if you want to access functional analysis, uh, you will not be able to distinguish who is doing what. <coughs> So uh, the model we used to assess this analysis was an autotopic model for of uh, non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, we use a KP cell line. This cell line uh, was gifted uh, from uh, the Taylor Jacks lab, and it comes from a mutant uh, mouse who had the mutation in KRAS and P53. Uh, KRAS is a, a, a oncogene, oncogene and this mutation activate, uh, constitutively activate KRAS, and uh, this is a deletion in the oncosuppressor P53. These mutations are activated only after the administration of the adenocrine. So uh, the mouse bear hold these mutations, and when you inject uh, intatachialy adenocrine, uh, they will develop uh, lung tumors. So this line has been prepared uh, from a lung, with the tumor has been dissociated and they established the cell line. Once this cell line is injected in the tail vein of the naive mice, you will have uh, tumors after a few weeks, uh, four weeks actually. And uh, as you can see in these logical uh, images, this is uh, a healthy lung and here you have a uh, tumor bearing lungs and these masses, the purple masses, are representing the uh, tumor cells. So first of all, we wanted to uh, identify the endotic cells. So we get, uh, of course, uh, based on the parameters, uh, the singlets, live cells, and CD45 uh, cells, that is a pan leukocyte marker. And then we started to exclude uh, other myeloid subset. We excluded neutrophils that in the KP lungs become really, um, they, they increase really a lot. And uh, we excluded inflammatory monocytes that express CD11B and LY6C uh, with high levels. Then we excluded the eosinophils that are uh, really present in the lung, and uh, based on the expression of CD11B and Siglic F. And we also excluded T cells uh, due to the expression of CD3 positive uh, cells. And in CD3 positive cells, we distinguished CD4 and CD8. Finally, we had to exclude macrophages, and in the lung, there are present the alveolar macrophages that uh, are quite particular. As you can see, they, co they do express the CD11C marker, a really high expression, but they also express the Siglec F, that is also a marker of eosinophils. But they do not express uh, CD11B, that is a marker also for um, eosinophils. So after the exclusion of the alveolar macrophages, we took all CD11C positive cells, and here we selected for the MHC class 2 uh, positive cells, and in this population we were able to uh, identify CD11C, uh, uh, DC1 by the expression of CD103, and uh, DC2 by the expression of CD11B. At this point we wanted to be sure that this uh, population were not uh, affected by tumor macro environment, at least uh, for the lineage marker, so we identify different lineage um, markers, um, CD11C, CD24, uh, MHC class 2, CD103, XCA1, and CD11B, and we compare the control CD, uh, DC1 with the uh, tumor associated DC1. And as you can see, the markers are not affected by the tumor macro environment. Seeing that uh, the population we get it on were really DC1. Then we move to uh, try and analyze the, functional, um, uh, the functionality of these cells. So these cells, in order to activate anti-tumor T cells, uh, perform different, uh, um, di different things. They are able to secrete inflammatory cytokines, for example, IL-12, which is a key cytokine for T cell activation. And also, and more importantly, they are able to, uh, they are really efficient in the cost presentation. The cost presentation meaning that they are able to, effort, to engulf apoptotic tumor cells, uh, process the antigen, and form a complex with the MHC class 1, and present on the cell surface a complex uh, composed by MHC class 1 and the tumor antigen. And this is presented to the T cells, the 8 T cells, mediating their activation. So, 
we started with the secretion of inflammatory cytokines and uh, uh, we uh, performed two different approaches. <laughs> For the first one, we uh, wanted to detect the production of mRNA of IL-12 in certain DC1, and secondly, we wanted to look at the protein. And since this population is really a rare population, uh, was like impossible to uh, look at the uh, protein after sorting of these cells because the ELISA is not so sensitive. And so we decided to uh, perform an in vivo approach for the detection of IL-12 protein. So in this case, uh, we uh, were able to identify a sort uh, CDC1 from uh, control lungs and also from KP uh, tumor bearing lungs. We sorted the dendritic cells directly in the lysis buffer and we both performed directly PCR for the gene uh, encoded for IL-12 and also affirmative analysis to look at the uh, most differentiated gene uh, inside between the two populations. And as you can see by the QPCR data, in the, uh, the, the tumor bearing tumor associated this one express lower levels of IL-12. And uh, looking then at the affirmative analysis, if you look at the blue part that are, represent the most downregulated genes in the KP dendritic cells, you can see that one of the most downregulated genes encodes for interferon alpha, which is another inflammatory cytokines that is uh, crucial for uh, the anti tumor response. So, for the confirmation of the downregulation of IL 12, we perform an in vivo. Um, assay by blocking, by looking at the intercellular expression of the um, IL-12 in CDC1. In order to do that, we had to uh, block the, secretion, the secretory pathways of the cells, and so we inject in uh, Brefeldin A intravenously for six hours. Brefeldin A is uh, um, blocking the secretory pathways, and then we look at the uh, um, we dissected the dissociated lungs, perform extracellular uh, staining in order to identify dendritic cells, and then we permeabilize the cells and uh, perform intracellular staining to look at the uh, IL-12. As you can see here, we put the gate uh, on the FMO, and uh, here you have that in, in uh, uh, control DC1, uh, almost 10% of the cells in resting condition express uh, uh, IL-12. On the contrary, this percentage is really decreased in uh, uh, tumor associated DC1, confirming the um, analysis, uh, the, the data that uh, um, tumor associated DC1 do not express inflammatory cytokines. In particular, do not express high levels of uh, uh, IL-12. We then move to uh, analyze cross presentation of the cells. So we divided uh, in different. We perform different approaches. First of all, we wanted to check the ferrocytosis ability of DC1. So uh, we uh, had to set up uh, some uh, experiments for the in vivo and also the ex vivo uptake of apoptotic cells. And we perform in vivo uptake of apoptotic democytes first and then also of tumor cells. And then also the ex vivo uptake. So for the in vivo uptake, uh, was quite challenging, but we managed it, and um, we had to ex vivo uh, induce apoptosis in timocytes by adding uh, dexamethasone for five hours. Once we obtained uh, apoptotic timocytes, we stained them with the, uh, cell tracer violet, and these cells were then injected intra trachea in control or tumor bearing KP mice. After two hours from the injection, we dissociated the lungs and we performed extracellular staining. In this case, we were able to discriminate uh, dendritic cells that didn't eat uh, um, uh, the apoptotic cells, and here in uh, the um, double positive population represent the cells that have eaten the apoptotic timocytes. So we checked uh, the ephrocytosis not only in DC1 but also in DC2 and in viral macrophages. As you can see here, almost 10%, 8% of uh, uh, CDC1 in uh, control animals 
are become positive after two hours from the intratracheal injection of orthotic cells become positive for CTV. And uh, if you compare the control with the KP uh, associated DC1, you can see a strong down regulation, a strong decrease in the percentage of CTV positive DC1 that is also reported here. Uh, on the contrary, CDC2, uh, only a small fraction of CDC2 were able to um, uptake apoptotic thymocytes, and this percentage do not, do not change in, uh, does not change in a uh, uh, tumor microenvironment. If we look at the macrophages, uh, we can see that uh, uh, more than 20% of the macrophages are able to uptake the uh, apoptotic cells, but the percentage, again, uh, does not change uh, in the context of uh, lung cancer, indicating that probably the defect uh, of uh, um, uptake is uh, really selective for this population and it is not uh, uh, dependent on the tumor microenvironment uh, or from the localization. So in order to be sure that uh, uh, the defect was cell intrinsic and didn't come from, I don't know, for example, the localization <laughs> of DC1 uh, in, in, in the tumor, so uh, depending on the accessibility of the tissues for uh, the uh, apoptotic cells, we decided to perform an ex vivo uptake experiment. And in this case, uh, we um, sorted CDC1 from control and KP uh, lungs, and we incubated ex vivo with apoptotic thymocytes. This time we're uh, staying with the CFSC. And after two hours, we uh, performed confocal analysis. And you can see by uh, the image, the representative images, here in red you have CD11C representing the dendritic cells, and you can see also here. And in green, you have CFSC, and DAPI is uh, um, staining the nucleus. This is a T cell, a T cell, a thymocyte, apoptotic thymocyte, and as you can see, the dendritic cells in control animals show dots, green dots inside the cell. That meaning that uh, she is eating, she has her, she is having breakfast uh, somehow with the thymocytes. And here you have uh, uh, the KP DC1, and you cannot see any green dots inside the cells. There is a contact, but there is no uh, antigen inside. And as you can see, we also, of course, quantify the, the staining, and you can see a dramatic drop in the percentage of uptake in KP uh, DC1. So confirms once again that the data that we saw in vivo with the flow cytometry, uh, saying that these cells are not able to uptake uh, apoptotic cells. We then wonder if uh, uh, at early time point, so in the first phases of the uh, tumor growth, these cells are able or not to eat, to uh, engulf tumor associated tumor cells. And so, thanks to Julia, we generated KP uh, cell line expressing BFP, that is blue fluorescent protein, and we injected these cells intravenously in the mouse. And after a few days from the tumor in injection, we, uh, dissected, we uh, dissociated the lungs in order to see if the cells five days after tumor inoculation were able, were uh, still have some, uh, did have some antigen, some tumor antigens. For that reason, uh, we looked at the expression of BFP in uh, DC1. And as you can see in the, the representative dots and also in the um, graph, after five days from tumor inoculation, you have almost 15% of DC1 that is positive for the BFP. On the contrary, if you look at DC2 and also the sun macrophages, they are not positive or very few cells are positive for BFP, indicating that the, the importance of the uptake of tumor cells in the uh, first phases of tumor uh, progression uh, by these cells, this population. So for the first part, uh, we identify a defect in the production of inflammatory cytokines, and we also assess that there is a, uh, a lack, a defect in the ability to uptake cell-associated antigens. And we perform the, we demonstrated it uh, both with a model apoptotic cells, but also with tumor cells. So 
Then we wanted to um, analyze the second step of the cross presentation. That means once the cell have engulfed the apoptotic cell, the tumor cells need to process the antigen and uh, form a complex with the MHC class 1, that is here, and present uh, on the cell surface this complex. So uh, we need uh, a tumor antigen that was easy to uh, detect, and uh, we decided to use uh, ovalbumin, and uh, we generate a KP of uh, cells. We injected them, and uh, we, uh, generate, we um, sacrificed the mice in two different time points. At early time point, 14 days after the inoculation, where no tumor nodules is still uh, visible yet, and 28 days after the injection, that is called late time point, because we can see here, I think you will see, this purple zone correspond to a tumor nodule. And uh, we, uh, is, a, is present a commercially available a antibody that it's able to detect only the, uh, um, the complex composed by the MHC class 1 and the ovalbumin. So with this peptide, we can see uh, the dendritic cells that in the, inside the tumor, present at tumor sites, present on the, the cell surface the complex uh, MHC class 1 and ovalbumin. And as you can see here, at early time point, almost 50% of the cells present the complex on, the, on their cell surface. On, uh, on the contrary, at late time point, only less than 20% of the cells present these antigens, meaning that at later time point, with the development of the tumor, they lose the ability to present this antigen on the cell surface. So, uh, then, of course, we wanted to assess the ability of the cells to activate T cells, so we look at this T cell compartment. And, uh, I moved too much. And first of all, we uh, assess an in vivo, we set up an in vivo cross presentation assay. For this assay, um, we need to use a model antigen again, that is always ovalbumin, so we don't load the uh, apoptotic democytes with ovalbumin and uh, we injected them intatracheally in uh, control and uh, KP uh, bearing lungs, bearing mice. And the day before this, uh, we also injected OT1 T cells. OT1 T cells is a specific, um, a specific CD8 T cells that hold a TCR specific for the ovalbumin. And we also stain these cells with the CFSC because it's important because CFSC is diluted during cell proliferation. So with the, looking at the facts, you are able to distinguish the non-proliferating cells that are the green, uh, uh, bright green cells with the uh, proliferating cells that are light green. So uh, we injected the OT1 labels, we injected intatracheally apoptotic cells, and then we uh, went to the uh, lymph node in order to see if the cells from the um, two days after the injection, sorry, in order to see if there are T cells that have proliferated, because uh, if these cells went to the lung, uh, there they should be um, eaten by the dendritic cells, and if the dendritic cells works fine, she will go to, it will go to the lymph node draining tumor, uh, to the draining lymph node, that is the mediastinal lymph node, and there they activate T cells. So we look at the lymph node and we look for the cell division. As you can see by the plot and also by the um, graphs here, the histograms, there is uh, a, almost 50% of the T cells in control mice proliferated. So this is the unproliferated one, and here you can see one, two, three, maybe four cell divisions. On the contrary, only 15% of T cells in KP uh, bearing mice were able to proliferate, indicating that there is a lack of proliferation of uh, OT1 in these mice, so a lack of presentation by dendritic cells. Then, uh, this, is, of course, is a, a model because here we have apoptotic tumor that are not tumor cells and uh, uh, ovalbumin. So we uh, decided to look at the presentation of tumor-associated antigens, and for that reason, we came back to the KP of a cell line, and we perform uh, an adoptive cell transfer of uh, labeled OT1, 
uh, and also we sorted the C1 and we um, co-incubate ex vivo with T cells. In order to see here if uh, these cells present in the lung were able to present uh, the um, to activate naive OT1 in vivo, and uh, for that we, and, uh, this experiment was performed in order to see if uh, DC1 really acquired tumor antigen in vivo and present uh, um, ex vivo because only in this way uh, you have only have CDC1 that have to be acquired the antigen in vivo in order to activate them ex vivo. So for the first experiment, we uh, injected OT1 CFSC labeled in KPOVA at early time point and also late time point, and we check for the proliferation. As you can see here, at early time point, we have a huge proliferation of OT1 naive T cells, and on the contrary, at late time point, there is no proliferation at all of, the, of uh, T cells, meaning that at late time point, DC1 were not able to activate uh, in vivo T cells. Then, in order to be sure that uh, it was dependent uh, or have more hints on the, uh, the be, uh, to have more hints on that, uh, we perform uh, uh, um, mm. the same experiment uh, only at early time point in one type of buff three knockout animals. The buff three knockout animals does not have uh, the um, dendritic cells, not all the dendritic cells, but the CDC1. So the, the subset we are interested in. We injected uh, both animals with uh, uh, CFSC labeled OT1 T cells, and then we perform cell division. Cell division. We look at the cell divisions of OT1, but we also re-simulated ex vivo with the other uh, peptide, Simfecal, in order to detect the production of interferon gamma by these cells. So if they uh, produce interferon gamma and they proliferate, uh, if, well, you will see. Okay. <laughs> so in the one time mice, you have full uh, proliferation, and also 80% uh, of the uh, OT1 cells were able to produce interferon gamma. But in the buff 3 knockout, this percentage is much reduced, less than 40% uh, uh, of the, uh, any of the um, OT1 are able to produce buff 3 and uh, to produce uh, uh, interferon gamma and to proliferate, meaning that there is a contribution of the DC1 in the activation of uh, OT1 in the context of uh, tumor associated antigens. The last experiment we, uh, we performed as I told you, we decided to sort, uh, to isolate uh, DC1 from, uh, uh, this is wrong, uh, because we did it at early time point and late time point, sorry for that. And uh, at late time early time point, we wanted also to assess uh, which subset of the dendritic cells were uh, more efficient in presentation and activation of CD8 T cells. So here you have CDC1 and here you have CDC2. And as you can see by the proliferation and also by the uh, graph, the CDC1 efficiently induced proliferation in OT1 T cells, and this is not true for the DC2, uh, indicating once more that uh, uh, DC1 are this, is the subset that is more important at tumor site for the induction of cytotoxic T cells. And if you look at here, that there is a comparison between uh, CDC1 um, isolated from early and late time point, you can see that uh, at early time point there is a huge proliferation and on the contrary at late time point the cells are no longer able to activate CT cells. So at late time point uh, during the tumor progression the tumor microenvironment uh, suppress the um, ability of DC1 to activate T cells. So in conclusion, um, hope that I demonstrated to you that tumor associated DC1 are unable to activate anti-tumor cytotoxic T cells because of several hints. So uh, they do not produce inflammatory cytokine, they have a defect in, in uptake of apoptotic tumor cells and also uh, defective cross presentation. And so uh, with all the experiment that we set up and we perform in vivo, I uh, hope to convince you that flow cytometry can be also a successful tool for the in vivo uh, investigation of in vivo disease function. I don't know.
I have more time. See. Si. <laughs> so we skip <laughs> to the second part. Uh, very briefly, tell me when I have to stop. From the uh, affirmative analysis, we also um, look at different uh, all the downregulated genes, and uh, we. Uh, the, we saw that between the most downregulated genes, uh, there is uh, a particular gene that is called TMD4. TMD4 encodes for um, a receptor called TIM4, that is a receptor for apoptotic cells. And uh, uh, we confirmed the expression of TIM4. We checked for the, its expression in different uh, myeloid subsets and we compare the expression of, uh, of these molecules from between uh, um, the subset in control and KP tumor lung, bearing lungs. And as you can see here, you have C we have CDC1 that do express actually high levels of TIM4 in the control, and we confirm the data of the gene expression analysis that TIM4 is strongly downregulated in uh, tumor bearing lungs. And uh, more interesting, we also checked uh, different uh, um, myeloid subset in the lung, uh, DC2, alveolar macrophages, these are interstitial macrophages, monocytes, eosinophils, and neutrophils, and all the subsets we checked were, were negative for TIM4 expression, meaning that this receptor, this receptor is really selective for uh, select, uh, DC1, the subset of DC1, and it's down regulated, uh, it's down regulation in tumor associated DC1 could be um, the mechanism of the loss of the uptake ability for these cells in the tumor compartment. So we started to investigate uh, the role of TIM4 on CDC1, and uh, we um, performed some experiment in collaboration with Nagata from the University of Osaka that had the TIM4 knockout mice, and uh, uh, they performed for us an ex vivo uptake by using CD11C positive cells and then looking for uh, all the CDC1. Uh, and as you can see here, the knockout CDC1 show a decrease, a defect in the uptake of apoptotic cells, confirming that probably this uh, receptor is playing an important role in BC1 for the uptake of apoptotic cells. Uh, then uh, we wanted, of course, to perform the same experiment with uh, in vivo. And so we treated, there is a blocking antibody uh, for TIM4. So you can inject this blocking antibody in uh, uh, the mouse, in vivo, and you will have the uh, block of the molecule that resembles a kind of knockout animal. So at day minus, at this minus uh, one, five, we um, injected the isotype of uh, um, the antibody blocking for TIM4, five hours uh, before the injection of apoptotic cells, and then two hours after the uh, apoptotic cells intratracheal administration, we analyzed the in vivo uptake. Again, you have CDC1, CDC2, and alveolar macrophages in isotype treated mice, and here in the anti uh, TIM4 blocking blocked mice. And as you can see by the plot and also by the graph, there is a huge decrease in the percentage of CTV positive DC1 if we block uh, TIM4. And this block, uh, this decrease is selective for DC1. There is no uh, change in the percentage of CTV positive DC2 or alveolar macrophages when we block TIM4. We then check the cross presentation if uh, with the, uh, the blocking antibodies. So meaning that we wanted to assess if the block of the uptake, uh, blocking TIM4 will block the uptake, okay, but the uptake will lead to a block also in the cross presentation. And so we, perf we injected as uh, before, uh, OT1C positive, uh, one day before the administration of uh, uh, isotype and then uh, we injected uh, um, the uh, ova expressing apoptotic cells in tatachiali, and we checked for the proliferation of OT1 two days after the, um, the, the, the administration of the apoptotic cells. And here you can see that in the control mice, once again, we have a huge proliferation of T cells, but if we block TIM4 in vivo, you have a strong, a, a strong decrease 
of the uh, proliferated T cells, indicating that the block of apoptosis or the block of uptake of apoptotic cells induced by the block of a TIM4 is, uh, um, results in a complete block, not complete, but a huge block of OT1 proliferation and OT1 activation. Uh, once again, we use uh, here uh, a model, so they are not tumor cells, but we are injecting apoptotic cells. So we wanted to move to see if uh, TIM4 controls also the capture of tumor-associated antigen in lung cancer, and for that reason, we use uh, KP of a BFP as before, and here we did the animals before the injection of BFP-positive cells uh, with the anti-TIM4, and you can see that five days after um, tumor inoculation, we have 15% uh, of BFP positive cells, but if we block TIM4, there is that less than 2% of the cells that are positive for the BFP. So blocking TIM4 at uh, early phases of tumor development, the block of TIM4 block the uptake of tumor cell associated antigens by the dendritic cells. We also checked in the KP of uh, uh, animals if uh, um, there is a lack of uh, um, presentation to naive to T cells, and so here we inject we block TIM4 in vivo, then we inject the KPC or KP of cells, and uh, uh, we block again at day three. And then at day seven, we isolated DC1 and we incubated ex vivo with OT1 uh, labeled with the CFSC. And here you can see that uh, this, um, this is coming from isotactitis mice in this proliferation of OT1 T cells, but inside the dendritic cells that are coming from um, mice treated with blocking uh, TIM4 do not induce uh, T cells activation. We also look at the endogenous uh, T cell response, endogenous against uh, T cell response against uh, uh, ovalbumin, of course. So we check for um, we induce the we uh, we treated the animals with anti team four and isotype. Uh, we injected them with ova, and then we look for the endogenous response. So we um, collected blood samples at different time points, and here you can see. It. 7, 14, 21, and we ex vivo simulate with the uh, peptide uh, of a peptide that is called Synfecal, and we check for the production of interferon gamma. And uh, in uh, uh, black, you have isotype treated mice, and in blue, the um, anti TIM4 blocking antibody treated mice. And you can see that the 14 days post tumor inoculation, you have a response against uh, albumin. So T cells are able to produce uh, interferon gamma, and this uh, T cell response is completely abrogated when we treated the animals with the anti tim 4 uh, blockade antibody, indicating that tim 4 is really able to control the initiation of tumor-specific T cell response. Last experiment, we wanted to assess if uh, the tim 4 is also important for the uh, anti-tumor response uh, against uh, uh, neoantigens, and uh, if it's uh, important for the control of immunogenic uh, chemotherapy. So if it's important to induce the, the um, anti-tumor response after immunogenic thera therapy. And uh, uh, here we use uh, KP cell lines, so without strong antigens. We treated animals with isotype or anti tim 4 the day, uh, at day six, post the injection, and the day, uh, at day seven, we inoculated the mice with uh, immunogenic chemotherapy that is called oxa, oxaliplatinum and uh, ciclophosphamide. And we performed the same at day 13 and 14. And we sacrificed the mice uh, 28 days after uh, tumor inoculation. We look for tumor burden and also for T cell response. In this case, we don't have uh, an antigen to look at. So we don't have uh, uh, TCR-specific uh, uh, T cells to look at. So we check for the express for the ratio between CD8 T cells and CD4 T cells. And as you can see here, uh, the uh, only the treatment. This is without nothing. So the untreated animals 
have uh, a, uh, this uh, less than one, than the one ratio between CD8 and CD4, meaning that there are more CD4 than CD8. And if we treat uh, with uh, oxaliptatin cyclophosphamide together with isotype, we have an increase in the ratio, meaning that we have more CD8 than CD4. And if we, uh, treated, but if we treated the animals with the uh, blocker antibody against CD4, we have a decrease in uh, uh, the ratio between CD8 and CD4. And we check uh, for that in the draining lymph node and also in the lung. And in both cases, we can see that blocking the, um, blocking the team 4 uh, induces a reduction in the ratio between CD8 and CD4 T cells. And if you look here, we also check for tumor burden and the treatment with oxaliplatin and cyclophosphamide uh, induce a, a huge decrease in tumor burden and this is uh, uh, reverted if we block anti team for uh, if we block with the anti team for antibody and here you have the area nodules finally we uh, went to the human and uh, we check in the TCGA for uh, gene signatures and also for team 4 expression and uh, here we have uh, CDC1 signature and team 4 and as you can see this is TCGA representing the patients with uh, lung cancer, non small cell lung cancer, and there is a correlation between the presence of DC1 and the presence of TIM4. And uh, also we check, uh, uh, we differentiate, uh, these are total lung cancer, and here we differentiate stage one with stage, uh, the more aggressive stages, and uh, you can see that the correlation is higher in stage one than in stage, uh, in uh, the other stages. And so, oh, sorry, this is CD8. Okay, but it is higher in the uh, pathological stage one, meaning that uh, at early time point, you, we have a, a huge correlation with CDC1 and TIM4, and this is uh, probably downregulated during the tumor progression. Here there is the signature of CD8 that correlates with the presence of, of TIM4, and here, just to be sure, uh, concerning our analysis, it is confirmation of uh, already present uh, data in the literature, indicating the correlation between CD8 and DC1 in the uh, tumor lungs. So finally, uh, we are <laughs> convinced that TIM4 can be, downregulation is a novel mechanism for immune evasion because TIM4 we think the, the TIM4 is important in the lung in order to perform efficient aphrocytosis in DC1 that uh, will result in anti-tumor T cell response. And uh, when the cancer is present in the lung, there is uh, an impact on DC1 performing down regulation of TIM4 that blocks the uptake of uh, apostatic tumor cell <coughs> present uptake and also uh, will result in the tumor immune escape. So finally, I want to thank, uh, uh, of course, Federica, because without her, this work would not have been possible, and uh, because uh, I, she was amazing during all the five years that I have been here. And uh, I have to thank, of course, uh, Francesca and Pippi, because they are uh, continuing this uh, work, uh, hoping uh, we will close it uh, faster. <laughs> And uh, I would like to thank also Serena and Simone helping with the in vivo studies, uh, our collaborators Pierre uh, Goumont-Pré and Lidl Pierre, uh, the collaborators in, uh, because this name is unpronounceable for me, and <laughs> <laughs> our collaborators in Japan uh, that have the team for knockout animals, uh, the collaborators for the bioinformatic part, uh, and of course my present boss that um, let me be here today. <laughs> And thank you all for your attention.